Tony Abbott, thanks for joining us at the Geelong Advertiser. Now, the seat of Corangamite is the most marginal in Australia. If the Coalition had won it, you would be PM today. What are you going to do to win the seat back? Well, I think we'll uh, do what we did last time, only better. And last time we had a great candidate and we had good policies, but I think we were still dogged by the fact that uh, uh, we'd lost in 2007. Uh, I think there was still uh, a sense amongst the people, at least in Victoria, uh, that we needed to spend more time in purgatory before we could go back into office. Now, uh, I think all we've seen since the election uh, is a bad government getting worse, and I think the mood is uh, quite dramatically different now than it was uh, back in August of last year. I think the election of the Bayou government has been good for the Liberal brand here in Victoria, uh, and I think a hung parliament has been very bad for the Labor brand right around Australia. Will you put Sarah Henderson up again? Well, that in the end will be a matter for the local party, but uh, she was a great candidate. She ran a great local campaign, and I'd be very happy to have her again. Um, in the end, uh, I will work very effectively, I'm sure, uh, with whoever the, the local party picks. But, uh, but if it's Sarah, uh, I'll certainly be very happy. There were some Liberal Party staffers who said that uh, she had the perfect opportunity but uh, blew it against... Uh, Darren Cheeseman, who was um, on his way out. Yeah, I think that's a bit unfair. Uh, I mean, everyone's wise after the event. Um, listen to Labor staffers talking about Prime Minister Gillard right now. Uh, it's nothing but bile. Um, but uh, I certainly, uh, I, I was very happy to work with Sarah and I'd be happy to do it again. Okay. Now, Geelong's one of the most carbon heavy communities in Australia with all the industry that happens here with Shell and Alcoa mm -hmm. and Ford. Um, some of those industries have cautiously welcomed the carbon price from the government, so long as the government helps out with the costs. Mm. What will happen to these heavy polluting, trade heavy uh, ex uh, industries uh. if there isn't a carbon tax? Well, a carbon tax will be a disaster for Geelong. It'll be bad for Australia, but it would be disastrous for areas which have a big concentration of heavy industry. And we've got cement, we've got aluminium, We've got motor manufacturing here in Geelong, and uh, uh, these are all industries that would be at a very serious comparative disadvantage under a carbon tax regime. It's interesting that the South Australian uh, division of the Australian Workers Union has uh, spoken out publicly against the carbon tax. The South Australian uh, branch secretary said that Wyala and Port Pirie would uh, be... Uh, uh, wiped off the map were his words under a carbon tax and economically uh, Geelong would be in desperate trouble uh, if this carbon tax came in and so I hope that the Victorian branch of the AWU and the Victorian branch of the AMWU are going to be just as strong for the workers of Geelong uh, as uh, the AWU in South Australia has been. I think the time is past uh, for union officials to be making excuses for a bad government in Canberra. I think what they now need to do is stand up for the jobs of their workers and for the standard of living uh, of their workers, which will be damaged very badly by this carbon tax. Now, we have some questions from our, our readers on uh -huh. Facebook. Andrew Stewart has uh, come in with more, more of a statement than, than okay. a question, yeah. but he's, he said uh, to fix the CBD and save Geelong, which mm. is probably not quite your brief, but as you saw when you, when mm. you came in, we've got a vibrant waterfront, mm. we've got a vibrant uh, retail uh, in the, the Westfield area, mm. two blocks up from the waterfront, three blocks up from the waterfront, it's almost a shanty. Yeah, yeah. well look, there's obviously a lot of uh, four lease uh, signs up, there's a, quite a few uh, uh, boarded up shops and buildings, so that's a problem. In the end, uh, Canberra is not directly going to save uh, local CBDs. What Canberra can do best is to try to get the national economy running well, try to make sure that government doesn't impose unnecessary burdens on people. And um, that's, again, my problem with the carbon tax. With everything else that's causing problems, why engage in this or indulge in this uh, act of gratuitous economic self-harm. So, you know, my objective uh, in government, should we get there, uh, will be to run uh, an orthodox conventional economic policy uh, where taxes are low, where interest rates are low, uh, where uh, regulation doesn't suffocate people 
so that the private sector can get on with its job. Now, I think if we keep the creative energies of our people uh, unshackled, that's the best way to ensure that over time uh, places like Geelong do as well as they can. Brenda McCorkle actually said, uh, how will the carbon tax impact jobs in the greater Geelong mm -hmm. region? And Narelle Turley uh, asked how, carbon, how the carbon tax can be t stopped. She said, I'm a Labor supporter, but the cost yeah. of living is killing people. Yeah. Is that something that you're hearing all Absolutely. around Australia? Absolutely. You know, I've just come from a uh, public meeting in, uh, in Colac, and, and uh, it doesn't matter whether you're in uh, uh, an outer metropolitan area, uh, uh, a great uh, city, um, or, uh, or a country town. I mean, people are concerned about cost of living. And um, again, this is why it seems so counterproductive, so counterintuitive for a government to hit people with a carbon tax at this time particularly when the rest of the world is, if anything, going in the other direction since Copenhagen. So, look, uh, the only political party in this country which will fight this carbon tax as long as there's breath in its body uh, is the Liberal and National Party. And, uh, you know, Labor is committed to it. The Greens are fanatical about it. Uh, when it comes to all these uh, issues, uh, the Greens are the tail that's wagging uh, the government. And, and uh, I, just, I just think that uh, um, we will uh, do whatever we humanly can to stop this. And my instinct is that sooner or later, at least some Labor people uh, will remember that they have got countries and consciences that they should be standing up for, uh, not just uh, a Prime Minister who's floundering. A couple of quick questions to finish up with. Uh, another reader asks, when will you get with it and support same-sex marriage? Mm. At least these people are willing to commit to each other. Mm. And look, you know, I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm pleased to see uh, stable relationships. Uh, it's, uh, it's much better that people are prepared to be committed to each other than uncommitted to each other. Um, so I am not against in any way uh, stable, committed, loving relationships, I'd, I'd like to see more of them. Um, but, but I just think that marriage is between a man and a woman. It doesn't mean there aren't lots of other good, good relationships, but if we're going to call it marriage, I just think it's between a man and a woman. Marsha Medley says, when are you going to stop trying to score points against the government? and truly When the government starts you? getting its act together. <laughs> I mean, you know, I am the opposition leader, Cameron. Oppositions are supposed to oppose, and uh, when there's so much ammunition uh, from the government, uh, um, I'm hardly going to say, well, I'm not going to criticise them today. There's a lot to criticise, but I'm not going to say anything because I don't want uh, people to say he's always opposing. Well, I, I mean, uh, I think anyone who listened carefully to the budget reply I gave on Thursday night would say, look, there was much positive in there. It certainly wasn't just an attack on the government, but in the end... My job is to expose the faults in the government uh, as well as to provide a positive alternative. And as I said, uh, uh, if the government was better, they'd provide less material for the opposition to work with. So you're not mindlessly negative, as Penny Wong would say? Well, uh, she would say that, wouldn't she? Um, I think that uh, uh, you listen to government ministers uh, and it's almost like they're repeating a mantra. Um, mindless negativity, mindless negativity. Well, I think the mindless ones are the ones that just get words put into their mouth by head office. Now, the final question from Christine Hughes, I'll have to remember her name, is are you going to have a swim at Eastern Beach in your budgie smugglers? Well, my staff are always trying to make sure I keep my pants on <laughs> <laughs> and don't get into the budgie smugglers. I'd love to go and join the Premier uh, Ted Bailey, uh, for a swim at Eastern Beach, uh, and I'm more than happy to wear the budgie smugglers as long as I'm allowed to do it in summer when the water's warm. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. Now, the only other thing is, mm. if you really want to win the Karangamite election, then you're going to have to uh, dump the union following and uh, get on board with the Geelong Cats. And and I realise that uh, this is the final request uh, that is being made of me uh, by the people of Geelong. Um, I can't dump rugby union, uh, but I can do my best 
uh, to become more familiar with Aussie rules and uh, I'm going to start by going to a game on the weekend but I don't think it's a Cats game unfortunately but I'll do my best to become more familiar with a great club. Tony Everett, thank you very much. Thanks Cameron.